Why do you <laughs> Because the, the images speak for itself and, and the script. And uh, and I was like, I started looking at this kind of disturbing and beautiful um, images, and they just burned a mark in me. And I felt like I was kind of uh, lost and found. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I, I think that it happens very rarely that you feel this immediate connection, not just with the character, but with the whole story and the universe. And uh, I've been, I felt like I've been waiting for this. This is something that my my entire being has been asking for. And uh, so it was not a question of if I should do it. I was just already doing it. Um, and from that on, you know, from that point, um, we started conversations and. A lot of the conversations were just images that were sent back and forth because he doesn't talk much, he uses images. <laughs> um, and can we talk a little bit about the shooting process? Uh, you shot the very beautiful but remote parts, and you know, was it, did that affect how the schedule went? Did you have to be out there immersing yourselves in the environment? You know, if, both of you, you know, from a director's perspective and Actors perspective. Uh, yeah, we, we found this uh, beautiful location. We have been uh, looking for a farm, uh, I think, for I don't know how long time, but we, we drove uh, two times around Iceland. He made a little clay farm, so he was looking for a farm he made in clay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then uh, this farm that we found, it was not like the clay farm, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, it was uh, very interesting and had a beautiful landscape around it, and it, there was nothing around, you know, and nobody had lived there for 20 years, so uh, yeah, it was uh, a perfect location. Uh, we, we, we shot up in the north of Iceland, outside of a city called Kakiriri, and it's basically in a valley, and when you drive into, it's like an hour from the nearest like, gas station, you drive into the valley and like, your phone just dies, okay. everything just dies, you're like trapped in this environment where it's like, you know, we shot in, in, in the summer and it never goes dark, so you just feel like, it was strange, I felt like we logged out from this world and entered the that world and we stayed in that for the summer slowly like drowning and drifting further away from the unreality. That sounds absolutely amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I think it reflects on the film too. Um, and can you talk a bit about the editing process for you? Like did you uh, when you shot it did you shoot it with you know the sequences in mind or did you assemble the film, you know, when you finally show what footage you've got? Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of uh, like slow cinema, and uh, yeah, you know, uh, I, I had an amazing uh, editor, uh, Agnes Gar, she's from Poland, and uh, I, you know, when I was working with her, I, I think it was uh, very good that she, she didn't understand Icelandic. Because uh, there's so much dialogue to understand. <laughs> <laughs> no, because, uh, you know, it, it, and she's so good with uh, rhythm, and uh, I also feel that you know uh, some of it is also in the script. You know, the, uh, you know how, how yeah. But uh, it, it was. Uh, but the film is very much like the script. I mean, you did, you, if if it always felt like you knew the whole, you knew how you wanted to shoot it. You knew what you wanted. And, and I mean, even the, the, the visual book out that was in it, like a lot of the images, a lot of the, the landscape, it was, you kind of recreated your, the, the images you had in your head. So you had the whole thing. Okay. Yeah, and uh, my DOP, Eli Anderson, you know, we, we spent so much time together, you know, on the location, and we were just, uh, we, you know, I, I started with the whole script, but I think after that, uh, me and Ila, we did it probably two more times with just photos, and we knew almost every frame we were going to shoot, so. And he is here, right? So can we have a round of applause for him? <laughs> You should get a round of applause <laughs> for I'm going to throw it open to the room as always.
make it good questions. So, <laughs> who has a question? I see a hand up there. I, are we getting mics to people? Do I see anyone running? No, you're going to have to project, I'm afraid. <laughs> yes, you, madam. Uh, did, did you set up a functioning farm with the sheep? Um, with the birthing scenes and everything? It looked like, like you, yeah, like you were helping the sheep give birth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I was. <laughs> farm you finally found and uh, it was um it's been uh, empty for like what 30 years 20 years 20 years and then the, the, the actual farm I lived like next like two kilometers away so um <clears throat> where we we shot like the lambing birth was in that barn and then the main the main house was like our own to to play with and do whatever over so and uh, you know when the you were doing this uh, delivering lambs, you know, it, it was uh, Numi's first shooting day. Have you delivered lambs before? All the time. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I came like from another shoot that I wrapped on Friday in New Orleans and flew to Iceland, <laughs> drove six hours, came to Acre, it was like Sunday and Monday morning, I was waiting in my trailer. For the, for the knock and then it's like a lamb is coming and I just run down to the bar. That's amazing. Um, any other questions? Oh, let's go there. Yeah. Uh, how did you settle on the name Atta for the baby? Uh, we, 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 we had another name, but uh, we thought it was too long and... Uh, and uh, me and Tran, we we were working with uh, working with a lady that uh, was called uh, you know her name is Atta, and I, I think we got the idea from that. <laughs> was she pleased? Does she know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, a little more about Ada's character. Um, I found myself really connected to that character, and. Um, it was just really beautiful. So, can you tell me how she was developed? Yes, uh, I, I'm very glad that you think she's beautiful because uh, I, I also think she's super nice. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, it's a, uh, we work with a lot of uh, children and uh, four lambs. And like nine babies and four lambs. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, puppets. And, uh, yeah, we and we mix it all together, you know, it's a, because all the scenes with Arta, it, it uh, was very time consuming, uh, in, because we have to do with, with all these elements. There's like this endless waiting game for the baby to fall asleep or the lamb to fall asleep. <laughs> you know, the crew had to go out and wait and just have a coffee and then the lamb caretaker was like, putting the lamb to bed. Finally, it's like, I got the call to like tiptoe into the house and they had the lamb over to me and I brought the camera out of action. <laughs> and then the lamb like opened his eyes like, bad. <laughs> like, everyone out, start again. It's like endless, waiting, waiting, waiting. I mean, the end result's phenomenal. Um, right there. I'm just really curious about the last sequence. For your character, what was going through her mind in that moment? Is that a moment of surrender? the power of nature or is it acceptance or is it some kind of are you owning up to what happened there in that moment i'm, I'm a little i'm just i'm curious about it um well i think that in the beginning when you meet maria it's like she's her life is on hold she paused it's it, the pain of losing her daughter is too 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 much to handle so i think she's like shut down she's just surviving she's not living and then when ada the second half is born. Um, she's she's a it's it's like a bridge. It becomes an opportunity to start a healing process. Um, it's like emotional oxygen into a locked off space, and then she starts to come to life. And you can see her, you know, during that summer, she she starts to uh, open up, and she gets colors, and she has like she makes love, and she dances, and. But I think she always somehow knew that she took something that doesn't belong to her and that it will come to an end. And I, and, uh, 
she describes Allah as a gift and it's like happiness, but it's also um, stolen happiness in a way. So I think in the end, she's she's back in life and she has full access to her pain, but she's living and she's there. So I think it's the beginning of a new chapter and. I mean, we've been talking a lot of it. There's lots of different versions, so what's going on there? But um, she's not going after Ata, and she's not looking for Ata, because she needs that Ata was never hers to keep. It's like happiness, in a way, you know, for her. So she had to let go of that to be able to move forward. Um, right, Jeff. Um, you said you really like slow cinema. Are there any directors or films that inspire you? Uh, uh, I, I was uh, studying in, in Sarajevo in this school. And, uh, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, let's go right there. Um, it's a very quiet film, but the way the sound design was, you make every sound effect sound so loud. Like crashing through the silence, would you talk a little bit about the sound design of the film? Uh, yes, it, sound for me is, uh, is is very important, and you know I, I think it's almost uh, just yeah fifty percent of the film, and uh, we, we we spend a lot of time you know uh, you know working on the sound of this film, and I. Uh, we, we, we did it in Trollhattan on a very you know, big screen and uh, where we saw that uh, it's very nice to do it on, on a big screen because then you see all the details and uh, and we, and, you know, I also uh, were, I'm super happy with uh, uh, Thor and Guðmason who made the score because I thought in the beginning that I, I didn't need the score but you know when we start editing the film then I saw that you know we, we needed to have you know at least you know something <laughs> and uh, yeah yeah and my singing was not enough <laughs> <laughs> say no, you can say no, your singing was very good. Um, oh, uh, gentleman Stan. Uh, yes, this might be a dumb story question, but I, I have to ask. Do you think Ada found her way eventually back to the farmhouse? Um, I, I, I think she, you know, at least know the way back, you know. I, I think she understood what he was saying. and. Uh, but you know, I, I don't know if she went back. Thank you. Yes, right there. You you mentioned uh, folklore informing this script, and I was curious if there were any specific stories or aspects of your culture or your background that we as an American audience might not understand that particularly informed this film. Uh, we. We used a lot of uh, like uh, small elements from uh, uh, Icelandic folk tales, but uh, uh, but none of the creature exists in at least the Icelandic folk tales. So, so that was unique to your uh, your process. That's like your own monster. That's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we will say a couple more. Right there. Uh, Yumi, you said that you had been waiting for a part like this when you read it, and I was wondering what, what was sort of the absence of the, this film that, that spoke to you in a way that something you felt like you've been holding out for? Um, this was a combination of... I started, I, I, I moved to Iceland when I was five, and um, I always felt like an outsider and a weirdo. <laughs> and I remember coming there and I was like, I belong to this country. And I got like, I felt like embraced. And nature is such a, it is a character. It, it, and it's, it's, you can't hide. Like whatever's going on in you will come out there. 
So if you want to avoid some things, you shouldn't go there. <laughs> but I always felt that it's a country and it's, it's, some, it's a very strong energy there somehow that forces me to, to confront myself. And it kind of brought me back to my roots and also felt like I peeled off lots of layers of um, behaviors and, and have truths that I didn't need it. Uh, but also to, to work with a filmmaker like Valdemar who pays so much attention to details and is so interested in the human uh, nature and, and who we are and really like deep study. And I felt like I could just be pure somehow. Um, so it's a combination of different things, but definitely for me to go to the most honest place in myself. I think one more question. Oh, there's two. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Um, so, what about eye for an eye with Rachel and the mother of the of Ada, and then the goat man killing the father of Ada? So, was that eye for an eye? Um, what do you think? Uh... <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I think just uh, everybody should uh, just uh, <laughs> somehow, you know, uh, yeah, take what, what they want out of this film. And, you know, I, uh, Uh, well, it, it was hard because it's, uh, it, it was almost like we were, first of all, it's quite cold and like in Iceland, always, um, and windy, and in, in the summer it doesn't get dark, so your body doesn't know what it is, like you're shooting in the middle of the night in full on daylight, so you start like, <laughs> you start drifting, <laughs> and so it's like physically and psychologically, it was, we were on a quite intense journey, but that also kind of helped us. I felt like all these different elements coming together helped us find the the soul of, 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 of the movie. And I think, you know, you should just always embrace what's harder on you. Surrender, rather than fight it. <laughs> uh, well, please, well, help, uh, join me in voting <laughs> for Team Lamb. <laughs>